Malacca Strait's South China Sea open for navigation. 19 Sababian reps leave coalition. Good afternoon, you're watching News on 2, I'm Jessica Lee. Malaysia and Japan have agreed to keep the Straits of Malacca and the South China Sea free for navigation for all countries. Now, speaking at a joint press conference with Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad in Tokyo yesterday, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe expressed Japan's willingness to cooperate with any country to support this concept with Malaysia. Meanwhile, Malaysia and Japan expressed support for the successful outcome of the historic meeting between U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Singapore. Tun Dr. Mahathir described the meeting as a step forward towards the right direction for a bright future. The fact that in negotiations, both sides must be prepared to give in certain issues if they expect to reach a good conclusion. After the press conference, Abe presented to Dr. Mother with a Japan World Cup team jersey with the latter's name and a number seven printed on it to symbolize him being the seventh Prime Minister of Malaysia. In return, Tun Dr. Mahathir presented Abe with a book on himself and said it would enable Abe to know him better. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Mahathir wrapped up his three-day working visit to Japan yesterday, feeling confident that Malaysia will achieve an unprecedented success with the support of longtime friends in Tokyo. Now, writing in his official Twitter account at Chitdate Official, the Prime Minister said his Japanese counterpart gave his assurance that he would do his best to help Malaysia. According to Tun Dr. Mahathir, Abe had given him ample time to hear out the problems faced by Malaysia. It is Tun Dr. Mahathir's first foreign visit since taking office as the seventh Prime Minister of Malaysia in May. Malaysia and Japan will rejuvenate and upgrade the Look East policy to deepen collaboration and strengthen business competitiveness for both countries. Tun Dr. Mahathir pointed to education, training and investment as among the areas that Malaysia and Japan could benefit from working closely with each other. The government has appointed former World Bank senior advisor Datuk Sri Dr. Ismail Baka as the new Treasury Secretary General with effect from yesterday. In a statement, Chief Secretary to the government, Dan Sri Ali Hamza, said that Dr. Sri Ismail, an alumni of University of Malaya, has vast experience in economic and currency management, having served in the civil service for 32 years. 58-year-old Datuk Sri Dr. Ismail takes over from Tan Sri Dr. Muhammad Irwan Seriga Abdullah, who was transferred from the Ministry of Finance to the Public Service Department and whose service contract ends tomorrow. Datuk Sri Dr. Ismail graduated from the University of Hull in the United Kingdom with a doctorate in business management. He wants to serve as a director for a national budget in the state budget office within the finance ministry. His other previous responsibilities included being Secretary General at the Agriculture and Agro-Based Industry Ministry and the Transport Ministry. The U.S. Ambassador to Malaysia has told Malaysia that assets seized by the United States as part of its probe into the One Malaysia Development Berhad or 1MDB fund will be monetized and returned. Now, this was disclosed by Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng via Twitter following a meeting with Kamala Shirin Lakdir, the U.S. Ambassador to Malaysia. Lim met with Lakdir yesterday to discuss American investments and companies in Malaysia. Lim said the U.S. Ambassador reassured him that assets seized from 1MDB will be monetized and returned to Malaysia as early as possible. The U.S. Department of Justice has filed civil lawsuits to seized assets, it says, were brought with funds misappropriated from state fund 1MDB. 
The Transport Ministry has cancelled a contract worth 808,000 ringgit for the writing of weekly articles by the minister. The Transport Minister Anthony Lok said the contract was signed on January the 24th this year. Lok said he had no need to continue the public relations exercise, saying he was communicating directly with the media and the public. Setakat ini tak ada apa-apa pembayaran dibuat dan saya telah mengarahkan supaya tidak ada apa-apa pembayaran dibuat dan kontrak ini sepatutnya dibatalkan. Serta merta, sebab minggu lepas saya dah, mereka bagi taklimat kepada saya, saya kata saya tak memerlukan PR agensi untuk bantu saya menaikkan imej. Uh, jadi uh, RM800,000 itu tidak patut digunakan dan uh, peruntukan itu kita tabunglah. On the announcement by Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad of a possible second national car to replace Proton, Luke declined to comment, saying he will leave it to the Prime Minister to elaborate. Luke, however, assured that for the Ministry, public transport would still be a key focus as it was the way forward. Suggestions to place all housing agencies under the Housing and Local Government Ministry will be presented to the Cabinet next month. According to Housing and Local Government Minister Zuraida Kamarudin, this is to streamline and unify all housing projects nationwide under one roof. Zuraida said with everything streamlined under the Housing and Local Government Ministry, housing development, especially people's housing projects in terms of distribution, pricing, design and management can be controlled. Bila kita dapat kelulusan itu, insyaAllah kita akan mengkaji semua, kedudukan status semua agensi perumahan itu dan dengan itu kita akan selaraskan dengan pembentukan uh, National Affordable Housing Council ya, yang seperti terpaktuk dalam apa kita punya manifesto Pakatan Harapan. Ya. Dan dari situ baru kita akan menyelaraskan semua balik semua projek perumahan dan dengan adanya penyelagaban atau penjelasan ini di bawah Kementerian Perumahan, maksudnya kami mampu untuk... Uh, mengawal pembangunan rumah-rumah PPR terutamanya B40 eh Among the housing agencies involved are the Federal Territories Affordable Home or Rumah Rumah WIP, One Malaysia Housing Project Prima, One Malaysia Civil Servants Housing PPA1M and Syarikat Perumahan Negara Berhad SPNB. Zuraida said the ministry will also meet with the finance ministry as well as Bank Negara Malaysia to further discuss the problems faced by first-time home buyers in obtaining housing loans. Now there is no urgent need to hold a state election as the issue of the appointment of the Kedah Assembly Speaker would be resolved in the best way possible. According to Kedah Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Mukris Mahathir, the process to resolve the issue involving the Pakatan Harapan State Government, PAS and Barisan Nasional is still underway. Datuk Sri Mukri said that he believes that it would be resolved before the first day of the State Assembly sitting on July 4th. Datuk Sri Mukri, who is also Kedah Pakatan Harapan Chairman, said that the response he received through informal discussions with PAS and BN also showed that the issue was not a difficult thing to overcome. Tak ingat mereka perlu berkeras. Uh. Jadi uh, itu sebabnya pendekatan saya selama ini ialah uh, dengan uh, memujuk mereka uh, untuk kita sama-sama nak membangunkan negeri Kedah ini. Jadi uh, dalam uh, era Malaysia baru ini, hubungan antara pihak kerajaan dengan pembangkang itu tak sama seperti dulu. Jadi uh, kita mengiktiraf dan memperakui uh, tugas dan tanggungjawab pembangkang. Datuk Sri Mukris told reporters in response to a statement by past Deputy President Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man that the party was expecting a state election to take place in Kedah as the issue on the appointment of the Speaker remained unresolved. All opposition assemblymen in Sabah are no longer known as Barisan National Representatives as they now represent their own parties except for two who have yet to announce their moves. Now, there are 21 opposition assemblymen and except for Ramno, all state component parties have left the coalition. 
This leaves only one assemblyman, each from APCO and PBRS, who have not made known if they will stay with their respective parties or leave. PBS Secretary General Datuk Johnny Mositun said the two assemblymen were APCO's Datuk Bobby Swan, who won the Nabawan seat, and Datuk Elron Angin of PBRS, who won in Suk. APCO helped Party Warisan Sabah and Pakatan Harapan form the state government, while PBRS have announced its support to the alliance. Datuk Bobby and Datuk Elron, however, did not join or declare their support to move made by their respective parties after the 14th general election on May 9th. Parti Baras National Berhad or Bernas is hoping to be the single gatekeeper to fulfil its social obligations after the government announced that the former's monopoly to import rice has been terminated. Now, in making the statement, Bernas Chief Executive Officer Ismail Muhammad Yusuf said there was always a need for a single gatekeeper and the role cannot be opened up for other players. We never had any issues with regards to self-sufficiency. You know, we've always had rice in the market and our rice is amongst the cheapest uh, in the region. Our paddy is amongst the highest in the region. So, uh, for me, uh, that means that uh, the system works. You know, but uh, if the government uh, wants to relook really at the system, we are, we are very keen to work with them as well. Ismail also said as of now, there were about 150,000 paddy farmers in Malaysia and Bernas has always been supporting them. He told reporters after meeting with the Council of Eminent Persons in Kuala Lumpur yesterday. A statement on Bernas's website said that it continued to fulfil its obligations under a privatisation agreement signed with the government in 1996. The government has been asked to ease the approval of import permits for marine fish as a short-term solution to increase supply and subsequently reduce prices of these fish in the country. Marine Fish Farmers Association Malaysia Deputy President Muhammad Razali Muhammad said the importers should be given easier access to import whatever fish they thought necessary as they had the consumer data. He said the most important thing is that importers meet the food safety standards. Marine fish prices have been on the rise over the years because of the very high fish consumption per capita in Malaysia. Been announced the platinum sponsor and Air Asia will be the gold sponsor for RTM's FIFA World Cup coverage, which kicks off tomorrow. Now, Maxis has agreed to sponsor a total of 18 million ringgit, whereas Air Asia's sponsor sponsorship amounts to 12 million ringgit, which makes up the entire 30 million ringgit the ministry needs to air the coverage of the main event in Russia. Speaking in Putrajaya yesterday, Gobin also revealed that there were more sponsors currently negotiating with RTM. The minister, however, said he could not reveal them because negotiations have not been completed yet. Gobin further noted that companies who want to come on board have to go through RTM instead of the ministry. Uh, saya juga difahamkan bahawa ada juga pihak-pihak lain yang telah pun menunjukkan minat untuk uh, juga menyumbang uh, kepada acara ini tetapi uh, masih kita dalam proses uh, perbincangan dan sebagainya saya mengalu-alukan uh, mana-mana juga pihak uh, tapi apa-apa jua uh, apa ini perbincangan dan sebagainya seharusnya dihalakan uh, kepada RTM ya uh, bukan kepada kementerian uh, kerana RTM uh, dia ni ada apa ni satu uh, Jabatan khusus yang kira pakar dalam bidang mereka ini nak bincangkan dan negosiat apa ini perjanjian-perjanjian daripada penyumbang. RTM will broadcast 41 World Cup matches. 28 of the matches will be aired live and 13 will be delayed. The quarterfinals, semifinals and final match will be shown live. And that's it from us. We'll be back at 7 this evening. Here's the top story. Malaysia and Japan have agreed to keep the Straits of Malacca and the South China Sea free for navigation for all countries. We'll be back at 7 this evening. Now, finding the perfect time to leave the city can be a challenge. Now, leave too late and you will be caught in traffic. But wake up too early and you'll have grumpy, crying kids in tow. Now, this Raya, make 
the most of your holiday to reconnect with family and friends by spending less time on the road. Now, according to Waze, people are expected to be driving up to 25% more during the Hari Raya celebration. The increase starts today and is predicted to peak at the following weekend. So plan your travels, watch your speed limit and enjoy the holidays. Till then, I'm Jessica Lee.